Welcome to Right Reason, a show about <clears throat> addressing ethical questions and looking at pop culture and engaging those both of those two worlds that almost never get engaged together. Let's see if we can enjoy the show and what we can ask here and answer. Just to expand on that a little bit, um, really the, what, uh, why this show is called Right Reason is it's trying to it's trying to push us all to think clearer and think better and push myself to, to also think more clearly. And sort of this clarity of thought is a kind of a lost, a lost uh, not, not only a lost virtue, but a lost uh, ambition for, for just, uh, even for people that think for a living. Um, and where, if it's a lost virtue today, where do you go to get back to uh, insights and practice of how to, of how to think clearly what are the objects of thought? What are sort of the objects of human life? Uh, the, how the world as a whole is structured, how the universe is built, um, not only from molecules, but even more deeply than mo the molecules and, and quarks and you know, neutrons and protons. What's below everything, right? Um, that's been asked and, and even answered centuries ago. And those answers are often forgotten in our very, very enlightened age which we think we know everything, but really most of the wisdom has been lost. And that's why I would travel to those eras to try to engage and recover and learn more than anything, some of that lost wisdom from those eras of human civilization. A user on Quora asks, if you could travel back in time, where and when would you go and why? I love time travel questions. Um, I would probably travel to one of two places. Uh, the number one place I would travel is classical Rome. Classical civilization as a whole is a pretty incredible place to be in, and, and the fact that we can still read works from that era is a great privilege. And the other time I would probably travel to is uh, Renaissance, you know, era, Italy or England or someplace like that. A user on Quora asks, do you agree that globalization is a necessity and not an option that you can merely refuse? Globalization, yeah, that's an interesting topic. Um, so there's two, um, there's two aspects to globalization. One is, one is the very politically charged aspect of it. Like, it's, it's, it's a political uh, issue, right? Um, and the second is more of like an economic question, like will the economies just get more and more inter interdependent? And I think certainly economically, there's no doubt it's, it's going to happen. We're all going to be more and more tied with each other. Uh, I'm not an economist, so I don't have a lot to say on that, but I do I think there's nothing stopping us and there's no way of stopping that. Globalization as a political thing of like basically every people turning into every other people uh, kind of having one just sea of humanity without any distinctions, without any, any sort of local subculture, so sub history, that I think has been an absolute orthodoxy. And also, that's a political question. I'm not a politician or a political scientist, but um, from just just the headlines I've read, it's always been seen as an inevitable orthodoxy of that's that was seen as absolutely infallible. As a, as a true statement that we're all just going to, we'll all just become one sea of people called hum, humanity with like one government somewhere like in Brussels or some, or some place like that running, running the government of earth. Uh, in fact, in sci-fi shows of, of recent note, that's been the sci-fi vision of the future as well. Hasn't it? Uh, you know, you go to Mars, there's a Mars government, you go to earth, there's an earth government. Um, in practice, just like a, some sci-fi visions have turned out not to be either good or, or, or accurate or, or worth pursuing. Um, this is one of those things. And in practice, it's, it's come out that it actually when you erase human distinctions, uh, a lot of human life is, is, is predicated on those human distinctions, on, on having a close sort of close-knit attachment to a place a certain aesthetic, a certain history, a certain tradition, and when you erase that, a lot of the, the a, a lot of what makes human the spice of human life gets bland. Uh, nobody is loyal to planet Earth as a as a as a country. I mean, that's just 
It's just too big to be loyal. I mean, in fact, if you go to Montesquieu, Montesquieu is a, a forgotten name today. He was a great, maybe one of the greatest uh, writers on government in human history. And he, he said for, for a human being to be fully engaged with his government, he, the government has to be no larger than uh, um, like the state of Delaware, right? If it's, if, it's, if it's anything bigger than that, it's too big for you to be emotionally involved in it. That's why the founding fathers were, were very, very careful to establish a federal two-tier system of government in which you have the federal government that's true in Washington, D.C., but really your government is meant to be your state. That's been meant to be the, the country that you live in, that you have loyalty to, that you learn all the, tradi all the traditions of, all the music of, you know, the cuisine, you know, you, you know the history of that state, you love it, like you go on to like marches and parades every year for it. That was always for, for hundreds of years the American way of life. And then the federal government was, was far away, was kind of irrelevant. Um, and you know, every now and then you'd vote for people there, but by and large it was seen as invisible. And now that's become corrupted, right? And now Washington, D.C. is the only place that matters, and your state is, it doesn't matter. Like, we live in, this is Philadelphia. New Jersey is, like, across the bridge. I cross there every day. I don't think twice that I'm crossing a different state. It, nothing changes. It's the same people, the same cars, the same buildings. Nothing, nothing different about it. So a lot of the essentials of the founding understanding of, of, of America, but just of human nature, and that... That understanding came before America, uh, before America even existed. That understanding has been lost. So this is my long answer of this very short question to say globalization as a political idea is probably not healthy. And uh, we've seen it be not healthy. And the greatest thinkers have, that have thought about this question have said localization is a much better alternative. A user on Quora asks, what movie could be adapted into a great television show? Movie adapted into a television show. Um, well, it, with the fiasco of Game of Thrones, I think if we adapt Lord of the Rings to like a, a 10 season show, that could be epic. Um, let me think about that. I think um, just to just to I think to to zoom out of the fantasy world, which is kind of getting a lot of attention these days. Um, oh, I'll I'll answer this this way. It's it's not the answer that I was going to give, but one of my favorite TV shows is Firefly. Maybe the the, the like the greatest sci-fi show ever made is called Firefly. It was canceled after twelve episodes, <laughs> um, and it became so popular that. It was, it was more popular after it was canceled than when it was on TV. So it was so popular that a whole movie was made of, of that failed show after it was canceled to, to sort of to, to, to provide the answers for all of the story arcs, for all the, all the fans that were watching those, fellow, those 12 episodes over and over again, as I've done. So there's a movie that's like the end cap for the show. And that's the end of the story arc for Firefly. I wish the show was never canceled. I wish uh, that movie was stretched out into the 12 seasons or years that it was, in, it was intended to. We could all enjoy the story arcs of Firefly. And if you don't know what Firefly is, you have to go see at least one episode. We'll thank you later. All right, everybody, this is my outro. I am saying goodbye. Hope this was helpful. Hopeful this was, um, this was good. And uh, please subscribe. Please watch more of this in the future. And let us know what you think. We're always learning, always improving, and hopefully you are as well. Thank you. Take care.